the International Dino Authority. Today we have one of our victims that comes through on a regular basis. And when I say victim, here's why. From the factory, GM has done something with this which I, I've never understood. What happens with this six liter is that they give it a bunch of torque at the bottom and then they kill it in the mid-range. It doesn't go again until about 5,000 RPM. Today, we're gonna to fix that. We're gonna walk through step by step like we always do and this 2016 six liter 2500 Silverado is gonna leave here driving like a normal truck, not like one that's been neutered by GM. Okay, after making a series of baseline passes, there are no surprises with this truck. First of all, it's running really good because it has 470 plus thousand kilometers on it. For those of you watching south of the border, that's over 360,000 miles. So the engine's gonna be down on power a little bit, but this runs really good. It's quiet, it doesn't make a noise, there's not a lift or tick. Just after those number of kilometers, you can expect that your rings don't seal quite as good. Your valves aren't quite as good as they were brand new. And everything's just a little bit off. It has a cold air intake. Let's see if we can't take advantage of that. But here's where our results are. It comes on in the bottom really nicely. Doesn't make a lot of power, but it comes on pretty hard. And then it just dies. You can see over my shoulder, the torque simply comes on and then it just dies. And exactly like every other six liter, right about 5,000 RPM, it starts to make horsepower again but there's really only a little bit of torque here, 200 and dies off by the time it gets to 3,500, which you really don't want to rev your truck past anyway, but we're gonna give him a whole bunch more in this area where he can actually use it, and that will give him the increase in fuel mileage. So what we will see is that you have a lot more power at the beginning of the pedal, because we're gonna make the engine way more efficient down low, not by raising the timing, by working with the fueling. So once we have the fueling correct down low, then we can work with the cam and we can make the engine rev up in the lower RPM range at a much more aggressive rate. So you barely have to step on the gas and truck gets going. That increases your fuel mileage because most of your fuel mileage is on takeoff or acceleration. Once you're cruising, there's really not a lot to be gained. So that's what we're gonna do right now. We're gonna bring this 193 horsepower up we're gonna bring this 212 foot-pounds of torque up, make it into a true six liter, but again, it's 470,000 plus kilometers and it's a 2500, so that all takes more power to turn. The axles are heavier, the wheels are heavier, the tires are heavier. The drive shaft itself takes more power to spin and the rear end, the gears, everything's bigger and it just takes more power to turn. Let's see what we can do with this. in so two separate tuning updates the first couple of updates takes Wally 10 15 minutes just to get himself all the data pulled and start to make all the changes you need to remember every single vehicle that comes in has a different format and a different logic inside the computer so Wally has to go back in and go yep okay when we're tuning this this particular area is what affects fueling, timing, transmission, cam, uh, mass airflow, map, all of those things are in play, but we have to see where they are within the logic of a specific computer. And the logic on a 5.3 and an E38 is not the same as the logic inside of a 6.0 on an E38. Same computer, but it's not built quite the same. We're starting to get some power though, and the, as soon as he stepped on it that time, I said, okay, here we go because now we can hear it, instead of just sort of lumbering and laboring, what it did was, it actually just took right off. It made its 
passed quite a bit quicker, and it actually went through where we normally would stop at about 5,800. Just zoomed right past that, which was nice. Engine's running good now. Let's do a quick comparison, and then we'll do a bit of an overlay. So right now, 307 foot-pounds of torque, and look where the torque starts. Right here, we start at 285 at 1,900 RPM. That's where your six liter should go. It pulls, and it pulls all the way through now. Instead of having that loop where it goes up and then comes on, it actually pulls right from start, it goes up, it stays up, and it doesn't shut off until we get to about 4,700 RPM. It starts to go, okay, well, that's as high as I want to rep. Now, let's do an overlay of just that on our best when he came in. Our best one when he came in, I think, was number five. So we're going to overlay this one with number five and show you the difference between where they are now. Well, he's not done yet. He's just kind of started to get into it. He's starting to get it to respond. Here we go. Alrighty, so here is your best as it came in. It's starting at 190 something foot pounds. It jumps up, but it very quickly dies. Just take a look at this curve. This is your torque curve. It very quickly dies. Now let's go up here. It jumps in, it stays up, and it keeps building and building and building and building and building. We are already done in this stock tune by 3,300 RPM. At 3,300 RPM here, we actually have an extra bump with more performance, and then we take off and hold it for another 12 to 1,300 RPM. So the torque is now broad, there's a lot more rubber, and it starts sooner. That's a truck. transmission now you'll see he brings it up to the speed he wants it to shift in first gear now this is the speed he wants it to shift in second gear so this will be your second to third shift he's going to do each one of those speeds and he's going to do a comparison because we've input the tire size but we've converted tire size to revolutions per mile i'm actually going to show you that over here we have the actual tire size it's a 35 inch tire but you put in the metric size and it converts it to revolutions per mile this computer logic works from that number 575 revolutions per mile now think about it if it was a larger tire if the customer went out and put a slightly larger tire you would have fewer revolutions per mile because it would not turn as many times in a mile so if we put a smaller tire, obviously that number would become larger. You might go up to 580 or 600. If you would end like a 235 from a 295, you're going to be into 650, 700 revolutions per mile. We have to calibrate timing, load, transmission, speed, and uh, speedometer off of all of that from revolutions per mile. That's the first uh, sort of basic that you start with and then we extrapolate from there and then interpolate between the gears from there. So that's kind of interesting. It's not something we normally include. However, because he was running through this here, we wanted to kind of explain that and show you that in between doing, getting more torque and more power, which this truck now runs amazing uh, compared to when it came in, it's just straight up and it works good. Um, we're also doing a transmission tune to make sure the transmission lasts. It's already got 475,000 on it. We will change the shift points to make them accurate and correct. We will also make sure that the pressures are not flaring between shifts, and we'll have a, a really, really nice truck to work with here. All right, we've now made four separate tuning passes, which means that Wally has 
shut down, and what he has done is made changes inside the programming of the computer, and then we bring it and we test his changes. Having done three or four hundred of these trucks, we know what changes need to be made, but not the exact numbers. So those exact numbers are different for every single vehicle because we're measuring grams of air per cylinder per second on each bank. So in the end, taking all of that information and putting it into the program and getting the proper settings gives you this. We now make over 340 foot-pounds every single time he steps on the gas. We now make between 290 and 300 horsepower every single time he steps on the gas. But it's this that we care about. The minute you step on the gas, it, there is absolutely nothing, no lag on the pedal. It just simply takes off and makes its way forward. We're going to do a quick comparison now to what it was ahead of time. We'll bring that up. It came on and it fell over. So you have a little bit of power, and I'm talking a little bit, 190, and it goes up to just over 200, and then it just simply dies. And it never makes that again. Let's look up here. We are now 300, looks like about 320. As soon as you step on the pedal, and it maintains over 330 foot-pounds for 3,000 RPM. This is now a work truck that you can go out, you can drive, it'll be fun. The, the throttle pedal's actually going to have some response and do what you ask it to do. Here's the way a, a customer normally describes their vehicle. I get on the on-ramp, I step on the gas, and I keep pushing and pushing and put, nothing happens. And then it kicks down two gears, and all of a sudden it takes off, and the gas mileage goes like this. So you draw a bunch of fuel, you have no torque, and it's a six liter, it should make tons of torque. This is going to be one of those ones where you step on the gas a little bit, the truck just takes off, does what it needs to do, stays in the same gear, and builds speed without you having to actually work. A lot less driver input, a lot more of the truck doing what it's supposed to do.